I can't tell if you're speaking. I'm sorry. Let me just check my uh, microphone settings. It looks like you're speaking. I can see the green outline. So I think it's just... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't know what's going on with 99. Hello? Wait, can you not hear me? No, I can hear you. Oh, I good. Can okay, I, I can, can hear, hear both of you. Cool. Thanks very uh, much. That's the obligatory tech thing of, can oh, you hear me? Can you hear me? I know. And your computer crashing as well? That's um, part of the course, isn't it? Yeah, and then it logged me out of Discord, so I had to oh. log back in, and then it was stalling out with logging back in. So, you know, fun and games. So but, can everyone hear us, or is it just the two of us? Uh, everyone should be able to hear us. Let us know. Yeah, we can all hear. Fantastic. Awesome. Hi, everyone. And, um, yeah, we're only five minutes after the start time, so that's perfectly fine. I reckon nobody will be disappointed in that. All right, and are you, um, will you be joining us on the Minecraft server as well, or are you just going to be reading for us? Uh, no, I will join on the Minecraft server. Hold on, give me a minute to load that up. No worries. Um, hold on, I'm also getting a reading sorted here, but... <clears throat> yes, I'm excited one... to hear some of those. Okay, there we go. You'll have to excuse me. Babies uh, are a wonderful source of sleep deprivation. So, yes. and also, <laughs> I have to say congratulations um, to Thank you and you. your uh, young family. You must be very proud. Very proud. Very happy. Very sleep deprived. So yes. it's a good combination. Oh, excellent. all right. I'm I'm getting into Minecraft. So give me a minute. It has to update Minecraft launcher, of course. Oh. <laughs> of course. Which it uh, seems to do every time I launch it. Yeah, and you can never tell what they've actually updated. Yeah. they just uh, never going to give us concrete slabs, are they? No. Or walls. It looks like there's no proper white wall in the game. It's only diorite. It's mm, annoying. Yeah, which is a bit... I do lots of... I like, like, snow blocks, white yep. concrete. I like clean modern stuff like that and there's no white wall no i completely agree um yeah so someone on minecraft said why aren't there any quartz walls there's quartz stairs there's quartz mm -hmm. slabs it would fit mm -hmm. perfectly did they have a did anyone answer uh did the devs have anything to say on that <laughs> <laughs> probably complete silence <sighs> doc m should have uh Asked the devs that when he had them mm. on the Hermitcraft server. Yeah. Oh, and I heard you fixed your sorting system. I did, and now it's broken again. So oh, I'm no. almost like completely giving up on Minecraft. I just don't even, I don't have the time to solve this, and it's no. incredibly annoying. So I want to play Minecraft, but I just don't want to have nothing but frustration at the end of the day of working. And no, exactly. And playing, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with my sorting system. Uh, okay, Minecraft is launched finally and i'm gonna go join the server and then i'll be with y'all although i do apologize for my technical difficulties here i just realized i don't have plug i need to use my main keyboard so i'm just going to be on my um laptop keyboard no worries I had some technical difficulties earlier today, so one of our events, we had to cancel it. So, I completely understand. <laughs> Alright, if my uh, computer fan gets too loud, let me know. I can't hear it. I, I think Discord does a pretty good job with the um, noise cancellation. Uh, normally, except when I toured SciCraft, um, I didn't have the noise cancellation on, so at the beginning of my part of the tour, my fan was, like, killing everyone's ears. <laughs> okay, I am... It says I've been moved to a fallback server. Oh, I see you're in it. I'll send you in. Okay. There we go. All right. Hello, everyone. 
Hello and thank you for coming. Uh, we've got uh, 50 people in the audience at the moment. So they'll be listening as you read some of your favorite passages from the Inheritance Cycle. And I believe you've got one from the Fork, the Witch and the Worm there as well. I do. That's what I was um, uh, getting my hands on before we started. Oh, good. All right. Um, did you want to start in any particular order or just from number one? No, wherever, wherever we want to start. Wherever you want to start. All right. So we have one from the Crags of Telnia. We have one in Trondheim. We have one in Bellatona and one in Thalkarvok, the Urgul village. Mm -hmm. And one in Carver Hall. We could start with the Carver Hall one, if you like. That's number five. Yeah, that sounds... Considering we're already here. Yeah, let me pull that up. All right, this is a nice... This is a nice short one. Shall we... Are we doing this here, or are we going to Carver Hall? Oh, where... Uh, you might be somewhere else, actually. Where are you? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll teleport everyone over. You're just across the river. So I'll, I think I'll bring you over to the... Um, Okay, I'm flying. Yeah, there's a nice patch of uh, an old field where they obviously set up the traders' tents. What? I think I need to up my render distance. Of course, got to have the atmospheric mountains in the background. That's right. Since I, I had it down to six chunks for my uh, testing on my <laughs> storage system. <laughs> I'll just Not set the time story. to dusk as well, so it's more thematic. And uh, when you're ready, I'll uh, turn myself off so you can. So I won't be interrupting you. Oh, well, I doubt you'd be interrupting. So, everyone probably is aware of where this reading takes place. This is, of course, is when Brom is speaking to the villagers and telling the story of the fall of the writers. And the funny thing is, this is actually one of the sections that I used to read. Uh, in schools back when Aragon was self-published. And uh, I, I dropped it as a reading back in the day because most folks hadn't read the book and so they didn't know what was going on and all of that. But it has always been one of my favorite sections. So uh, I don't have Brom's voice, but I will do my best. So here we go. This is from chapter uh, three, I think, Dragon Tales. Here goes. The sands of time cannot be stopped. Years pass whether we will them or not, but we can remember. What has been lost may yet live on in memories. That which you will hear is imperfect and fragmented, yet treasure it, for without you it does not exist. I give you now a memory that has been forgotten, hidden in the dreamy haze that lies behind us. His keen eyes inspected their interested faces. His gaze lingered on Aragon, last of all. Before your grandfather's fathers were born, and yea, even before their fathers, the dragon riders were formed. To protect and guard was their mission, and for thousands of years they succeeded. Their prowess in battle was unmatched, for each had the strength of ten men. They were immortal unless blade or poison took them. For good only were their powers used, and under their tutelage, tall cities and towers were built out of the living stone. While they kept peace, the land flourished. It was a golden time. The elves were our allies, the dwarves our friends. Wealth flowed into our cities, and men prospered. But weep, for it could not last. A very powerful beginning to a story. Ooh, that um, I, I I've said this before visiting the server. I can't even tell you uh, how amazing it is to be able to visit here and do these readings. And I have not done that reading probably since two thousand and <laughs> two thousand and two. Whoa, so that's, that's twenty uh, years. Yeah, I know. It came right back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I think you told me once that you don't usually go back and read your books after you've written them. Is that true? No, no. If I can avoid it, I try not to. Usually because mm. I'm so busy working on the new ones. And of course. during the process of actual writing and editing, I read the books. Whoops, sorry, I'm destroying your grass. <laughs> uh, I read them 
so much that I really have no desire to go back on that unless I really need to. Which yeah. might be, as someone pointed out on Reddit or elsewhere, might be why um, Nasawada's horse changes color from book to book. But I'm going to chalk that up to... Um, I'm going to chalk that up to the books having been written over 10 years instead of one year. Yes. And I think it's, in, in some ways, it's better not to dwell on the past uh, and keep looking forward with your writing. But my, my point there was that going back and reading that after 20 years, probably for the first time, it, it how did that feel for you? Um... You know, it's odd. It, 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 there are parts of it that I go, oh, that's that's rather nice. I'm not sure I would write, I could write that now. Mm. And then there are other pieces I go, mm, you know, I would word that a little differently now just with what I've I've learned. But um, uh, overall, I think it's a, it's a successful piece and Definitely. it's fun to read. Yeah, and I, I like how you mentioned that you would do something, something different now as well um, because I think the growth as an author is something... Mm -hmm. I'd really love to see with your work on the uh, Aragon adaptation that is still being worked on. Uh, yes. A little bit secret, you know, we don't know too much about it, but I'm really excited to see well, how you... Well, and, and I... <laughs> Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, um, no. I, I was just going to say that I, I hope so, but uh, I do want to say, you know, a lot of that will have to be filtered through my collaborators. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Hopefully, we'll all be happy with the final product. Mm. And I understand there will be changes, but I think uh, having you on board and knowing that you've grown as an author as well is something that I'm really happy to uh, know because any changes that we do get to the story, we know that they've come through you in some sort of capacity, even if others have uh, had their input as well, which is also another great collaborative thing that I'd love to see. So I'm really Well, and ideally, my... My, ideally, the showrunner I work with will, you know, have enough experience and be talented enough that they will be improving the project as well because mm. they know how to tell stories in uh, visual media. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'll learn from that process. And again, hopefully it'll result in something better than if, you know, that person or I worked on it solo. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I, I have to ask, is everyone excited about the countdown? The countdown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We've been talking about that. Um, <laughs> yes, FN. I, I FN. A, a few people so, have been trying to guess what that means. Well, I, I'm going to put this out there because uh, I'm sure there will be some questions, and I will tweet something to this effect on Monday when the final announcement comes out. But uh, this is not the only countdown you will be getting in the near future. Very exciting. Yes. So there is uh, finally, finally, lots, lots, lots happening. The only problem is my sleep, but that's my problem, oh. not yours. <laughs> well, I, I know all about that. Um, I'm living it right now because it's uh, 4 a.m. here in Australia. Ah, my apologies. But, um, no, no. I mean, I, I planned for this, so I made sure to get some sleep earlier, and it's all good. Okay. How are you doing? those smoke things ah the um the trail effects the particles trail effects, the particle I... effects. That is, that's so cool i can't remember the command because we did change the plugin recently someone's telling me it's slash pp pp for player particles oh malta is that you uh, yes malta is here do you want me to bring him in we can have a chat if, if he's if he available wanted. to speak. If he wants to. No, 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 no worries if he doesn't. If he I'll, I'll just invite him and he can he can choose to join or not. And uh, there's um, other people here who might like to speak at some point, so we'll see if we have time. Well, shall we move on to the next reading then? I think we shall. Ah, oh, Malte is here. Hello. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Of course, of course. All right. Um, Always a pleasure. Yes. Anyone wondering who who I am? I'm I'm Hringmar, and it's I've got the default Steve skin because I'm too busy to bother getting a custom skin. So there. <laughs> and it's also kind of your uh, persona now because you were, um, you had that skin for the two years, and you just wear your golden armor, don't you? That's right. Actually, you know what? I'll get some gold armor now. And perfect. Just, and while uh... you're doing that, I'll get us over to the next uh, location, which I reckon if we follow the. Um, Chronology of the story would probably be Drasleona. All 
and we're going to be doing this reading in the cathedral. So it's reading Let's number six it. when you're ready. All right, everyone grab a pew. <laughs> that That's pretty funny. Now oh. this, this is actually a reading I only did... Ooh, I want to say maybe two or three times really now near the beginning of uh, the whole process. Yeah, I think I'll just stand up at front so everyone can... Mm, like a priest of Hellgrind. Well, let's... Uh, let's not go quite that far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who are we sacrificing today? Um, well, you, I mean, you always oh, right. oh. sacrifice the, 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 you know, the server admin to the, the gods to keep the server running. I'm happy to be here. Cut off whatever you like. <laughs> uh, okay. This is a little bit of a longer reading. Um, like I said, I haven't done this one in ages, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, everyone ready? Well, I'm ready. I think everyone else is. Yep. They're shouting. Right. Yes. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Here we go. Silence of a forgotten tomb filled the empty cathedral. The air was chill and dry. Bare walls extended to a vaulted ceiling that was so high, Aragon felt no taller than an ant. Stained glass windows depicting scenes of anger, hate, and remorse pierced the walls, while spectral beams of light washed sections of the granite pews with transparent hues, leaving the rest in shadow. His hands were shaded a deep blue. Between the windows stood statues with rigid, pale eyes. They returned their stern gazes, then slowly trod up the center row, afraid to break quiet. His leather boots padded noiselessly on the polished stone floor. The altar was a great slab of stone, devoid of adornment. A solitary finger of light fell upon it, illuminating motes of golden dust floating in the air. Behind the altar, the pipes of a wind organ pierced the ceilings and opened themselves to the elements. The instrument would play its music only when a gale rocked Drosleona. Out of respect, Aragon knelt before the altar and bowed his head. He did not pray, but paid homage to the cathedral itself. The sorrows of the lives it had witnessed as well as the unpleasantness of the elaborate pageantry that played out between its walls emanated from the stones. It was a forbidding place, bare and cold. In that chilling touch, though, came a glimpse of eternity and perhaps the powers that lay there. Finally, Aragon inclined his head and rose. Calm and grave, he whispered words to himself in the ancient language, then turned to leave. He froze. His heart jumped, hammering like a drum. The Razak stood at the cathedral's entrance, watching him. Their swords were drawn, keen edges bloody in a crimson light. A sibilant hiss came from the smaller Razak. Neither of them moved. Rage welled up in Aragon. He had chased the Razak for so many weeks that the pain of their murderous deed had dulled within him. But his vengeance was at hand. His wrath exploded like a volcano, fueled even more by his pent-up fury at the slave's plight. A roar broke from his lips, echoing like a thunderstorm as he snatched his bow from his back. Deftly, he fit an arrow to the string and loosed it. Two more followed an instant later. Razak leapt away from the arrows with an inhuman swiftness. They hissed as they ran up the aisle between the pews, cloaks flapping like raven wings. Aragon reached for another arrow. A caution stayed his hand. If they knew where to find me, Brahm is in danger as well. I must warn him. And to Aragon's horror, a line of soldiers filed into the cathedral, and he glimpsed a field of uniforms jostling outside the doorway. Aragon gazed hungrily at the charging Razak, then swept around, searching for means of escape. A vestibule to the left of the altar caught his attention. He bounded through the archway and dashed down a corridor that led to a priory with a belfry. The patter of the Razak's feet behind him made him quicken his pace, 
until the hall abruptly ended with a closed door. Closed door. What's he gonna do? <laughs> uh, what indeed. I have to say, reading reading that section um, is really interesting because it... Rem it Aragon reacts so differently than he would later in the series. Um, uh, thank you, Tree of Willow. Thank you for the applause. Um, but, you know, thinking about what Aragon could do with magic or how he could have reacted. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Yeah. And what a great place to read this in uh, such a dark and forbidding cathedral. I even know. as described. This is one of my favorite locations. And yeah, as I picked out this section for the reading, I came over here and as I was reading, I saw it, it just matched so perfectly the visualization I had in my mind. So it's amazing what the uh, Intelligator building team and terraforming team and interior design team have been doing here. I'm really proud of their work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, we don't have a location for this, but I do have a special reading for you. Um, would you guys like to hear my absolutely favorite line from Brissinger? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So Brissinger is a long book. There's a lot of words in it but and a lot of sentences. But there's one sentence in particular that I think just has a lot of literary merit. Like when I read, wrote it, I just felt like I had leveled up as an author. So here it is. My favorite sentence from Brissinger. I puny human. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's uh, <laughs> Yabog, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what's the point of writing epic fantasy if you can't write lines like "die puny human" every once in a while? And it—it's exactly something that I can imagine an ogre would say. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, shall we move on to? Let's see, we have Bless the Child uh, sequence. Uh, we have the Crags of Telnair. Um, and of course, we have uh, Into the Breach at Bellatona. So your choice. I have to let the cat out. I will be right back and I'll teleport me somewhere and I'll be surprised. Fantastic. Well, while Christopher's gone, I reckon we should put it down to a vote. So uh, the options we have are the Crags of Telnair, Out of the Past is the chapter. We have... Uh, Elvis Blessing in Trondheim, and we have uh, Into the Breach in Bellatona. So if everyone could just throw their uh, favorite, it looks like Elva has Elva's had all six, seven of the votes so far. So I reckon, I reckon Trondheim it is. So we'll go there first. And don't forget, while Christopher's reading, feel free to walk around, have a look at the locations that we have here for you. They're meant to be explored. And as you're, as you're going through, just imagine what it would be like to be in there, um, in that situation, when the reading is happening. Powerful stuff. Anyway, I'm about to teleport you over to Trondheim. So be prepared. All right, I am back. The cat is freed. Oh, good. You came back sooner than I expected. <laughs> but I think uh, I think we've voted for Bless the Child. And I'll be bringing you all over to Trondheim in a couple of seconds. Uh, this one might take a couple of seconds to load just because of the size of the mountain that we're inside. Yeah.
Now this this reading is actually one that I this was one of my standard readings uh, when I was touring for Aragon, and I even I even read this even with um, Eldest and sometimes even into with Brissinger. So this is this is one of my favorite sections to read. Is everyone ready? Are we here? We good to go? I think so. All right. Yep, looks like it. Enjoy, everyone. <laughs> uh, hold on. I got to actually pull it up. All right, here we go. Without further protest, Aragon slipped through the jostling group that surrounded Sephira and jumped onto her back. Before she could take off, an old woman stepped forward and grasped Aragon's foot with a fierce grip. He tried to pull away, but her hand was like an iron talon around his ankle. He could not break her tenacious hold. The burning gray eyes she fixed on him were surrounded by a lifetime's worth of wrinkles. The skin was folded in long creases down her sunken cheeks rested in the crook of her left arm. Frightened, Aragon asked, What do you want? The woman tilted her arm, and a cloth fell from the bundle, revealing a baby's face. Hoarse and desperate, she said, The child has no parents. There is no one to care for her but me, and I am weak. Bless her with your power, Arjitlam. Bless her for luck. Aragon looked to Oryk for help, but the dwarf only watched with a guarded expression. The small crowd fell silent, waiting for his response. The woman's eyes were still fastened on him. Bless her, Arjitlam. Bless her, she insisted. Aragon had never blessed anyone. It was not something done lightly in Alagazia, as a blessing could easily go awry and prove to be more curse than boon especially if it were spoken with ill intent or lack of conviction. Do I dare take that responsibility? He wondered. Bless her, Arjitlam! Bless her! Suddenly decided, he searched for a phrase or expression to use. Nothing came to mind until, inspired, he thought of the ancient language. This would be a true blessing, spoken with words of power by one of power. He bent down and tugged the glove off his right hand. Laying his palm on the babe's brow, he intoned, Atra gulie un ilian, tarther ono un atra ono, weise scholar fra rauther. The words left him unexpectedly weak, as if he had used magic. He slowly pulled the glove back on and said to the woman, That is all I can do for her. If any words have the poor power to forestall tragedy, it will be those. Thank you, Arjitlam, she whispered, bowing slightly. She started to cover the baby again, but Sephira snorted and twisted until her head loomed over the child. The woman grew rigid, her breath caught in her chest. And Sephira lowered her snout and brushed the baby between the eyes with the tip of her nose, and smoothly lifted away. A gasp ran through the crowd, for on the child's forehead, where Sephira had touched her, was a star-shaped patch of skin as white and silvery as Aragon's Gedway Ignazia. The woman stared at Sephira with a feverish gaze, wordless thanks, in her eyes. There we go. Very good. Now, one question I had about this is, uh, did you edit, because um, I know the books have had a couple of um, editions, did you edit this passage mm. at all uh, after the original 2002 publication of Aragon? Uh... If you're talking about the Random Mouse edition, the hardcover edition, I don't think it was... I don't think I ever tweaked this. Um, it may have been tweaked between the self-published edition and the Random Mouse edition, mm. but I can't... I don't think there were any tweaks later on. Why do you ask? Well, I, I just think it's quite fortuitous 
how you talk about uh, blessings and allegasia could be a curse or a boon. And then we find out <laughs> later that, it, like, even you yourself found out as you reviewed it that Aragorn's blessing had in fact been a curse. But the foreshadowing was there already, even though it may not yeah, have been no, intended. Yeah, no, that was a... That was a completely that was completely fortuitous. Uh, I, I'm guessing that because I wrote that line about it possibly being a curse versus a you know a boon, hmm. that you planted the that idea. That's part of what planted the idea when yeah. I realized that I that Aragon slash me had read mess, actually <laughs> messed up the spelling of the of the um, of the blessing. And so when I went back and looked at this section, I was going, hmm. Well, what if it were were a curse? Yeah. And I, I really like how you didn't try to rip on it, but you worked with it. I tried. There are a few things I retconned. Um, there are a couple of little um, lines of the ancient language, a couple of words, uh, a couple of names that were tweaked between Aragon and Eldest, especially when I was working on the deluxe edition of... It might have been Aragon, because uh, that's where I really formalized a couple of rules and spellings for the ancient language. Um, and there are a few other little things, little descriptions here and there that I tweaked, but I try not to do too much of this. Hmm. The The big one that still bothers me to this day is that I allowed myself to be talked into cutting out uh, Jode flying on a Saphira at, <laughs> at the end of Inheritance. Yeah. Um, and then also Aragon giving um, one of the gold balls to Horst, I think. Oh, which, right. Um, he, really, he really should have. Yeah, Horst deserves something like that. <laughs> All of that was in the deluxe edition. Unfortunately, I haven't read it. But I think I've read some of the extracts on uh, your website. I'm sure. And and I did uh, incorporate a lot of that content into reprints of Inheritance because I said, you know what? This really needs to be in the book. So mm. not all of it, but a good chunk of it. Fantastic. What do you think, Malta? Anything to say? We just brought you in here um... to be silent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, embracing the readings and your commentary. If I have anything to add, I guess I'll do it. But um, I basically can only agree. Hmm. Like it worked out pretty, pretty well, and it also felt really organic. I'll tell you, I did that reading so many times, as well as a few others, that um, because I toured the self-published edition and then Aragon and then Eldest not that long after, I actually had most of these readings completely memorized. Even now, I could almost do the Bless the Child reading from memory. That actually was part of my presentations where I'd, I'd stand up with like, or I'd pull out a couple of pages or I'd pull open one of the books and then I'd say, you know what, let's just do this without that. And then <sighs> I'd just do it from memory. <laughs> hmm. what, what kind of audience was that? That was at schools, wasn't it? Well, for the self-published edition, yeah. Hmm. But then it was... Um, much of general audiences once I was touring for Random House. Mm. I, I can imagine that would have been quite impressive. Are you asking if you can have my sword or just any sword? Well, pizza tag. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it, it's not that impressive with the memory. I appreciate you saying that, but it's not that impressive with the memory. It's just like re remembering lines in yeah, a play. Repetition. Mm. Um, you do it enough times, it just gets burned in your brain. Um, there was, I, I always did one with um, Aragon and Sephira where he's telling her that stay behind, you know, that hunting often takes me further into the forest. It's when he goes to, it's when he goes to um, uh, carve a hall and leaves her behind. And I think that might be the first time she speaks. I can't remember. Hmm. Well, uh, reg regardless of the, uh, how difficult it really is to memorize, I think, the showmanship of picking up the book but saying, no, how about I do it from memory? That's that's the... Because uh, <laughs> I'm imagining that. Yeah, it's, it's a fun little trick, party trick to be yeah. able to pull at a, at a reading. Um, I, I see... uh, all right. Crags of Telnair or Bellatona? Uh, up to you. I'll let you pick this one. Uh, why don't we do the crags? Because uh, Bellatona is later in the story, and then we can do uh, Fork, which we're reading last. Fantastic. And yes, I noticed a couple of people who joined late. Uh, you might have um, uh, been in the wrong location. I will fix that now. You'll all be teleported to me. I 
All right, so we're currently at the Crag Zetonia, and if you just walk up this path, just as Aragon did with Islanzadi and Aya and Oric and Safura, you'll come to the edge of the cliff, and that's where our reading takes place. So I reckon I'll let you start with that. Following, following the path and waiting for the chunks to load. Mm, it's the trees. Alright, I am going to see. Oh, and uh, I'll just fl I'll just float in the air over the edge of the cliff just to perfect. give everyone. And uh, if everyone wants, we can also while we're while we're listening, we can just walk north, and that will bring us to Glader's hut. Uh, let's see what direction is north. Probably going the wrong direction. I don't think I am. <laughs> if you're not there at the end, I'll just teleport you over. Okay. I mean, technically, it's Ormus's hut, but... Oh, what did I say? The Gladers. I'm just oh. imagining him in a... <laughs> fiddling in a hut. Hmm. Might not fit. There's some big cliffs. You're getting some teleport. Yeah, I reckon a few people have been lost, so I'll just teleport us all over. Alright, here we go. Alright, once everyone's here, I can start reading. Alright, are we good to go? I think so. Alrighty then. Uh, I will pull up the right reading. <sighs> I don't think I've ever read this section, so this will be fun. The two of them descended by way of st the stairs while Safira glided to Earth were met on the ground by Islanzadi, arrayed in a mantle of ruffled swan feathers, which were like winter snow heaped upon a cardinal's breast. She greeted them and said, Follow me. Her wending course took the group to the edge of Elismira, where the buildings were few and the paths were faint from disuse. At the base of a wooded knoll, Islanzadi stopped and said in a terrible voice, Before we go any further, Three of you must swear in the ancient language that you will never speak to outsiders of what you are about to see, not without permission from me, my daughter, or whomever may succeed us to the throne. Why should I gag myself? demanded Oric. I indeed, asked Sephira. Do not trust us. It is not a matter of trust, but of safety. We must protect this knowledge at all costs. It's our greatest advantage over Galbatorix, and if you are bound by the ancient language, you will never willingly reveal our secret. You came to supervise Aragon's trading, Oric Voter. Unless you give me your word, you may as well return to Farthendur. Last, Oric said, I believe that you mean no harm to dwarves or to the Varden, so I would never agree, but I hold you to the honor of your hall and clan, that this isn't a ploy to deceive us. Tell me what to say. Well, the queen tutored Oric in the correct, correct pronunciation of the desired phrase. Argon asked Sephira, Did I do it? Do we have a choice? Argon remembered that Arya had asked the same question yesterday, and he began to have an inkling of what she had meant. The queen left no room to maneuver. When Oric finished, Islanzadi looked expectantly at Aragon. He hesitated, then delivered the oath, as did Sephira. Thank you, said Islanzadi. Now we may proceed. At the top of the knoll, the trees were replaced by a bed of red clover that ran several yards to the edge of a stone cliff. 
the cliff extended a league in either direction and dropped a thousand feet to the forest below, but pooled outward until it merged into the sky. It felt as if they stood on the edge of the world, staring across an endless expanse of forest. I know this place, realized Aragon, remembering his vision of Togira Ikonoka. Blood. The air shivered from the strength, strength of the concussion. Blood. Another dull blow made Aragon's teeth chatter. Blood. He jammed his fingers into his ears, trying to protect them from the painful spikes and pressure. Elves stood motionless. Blood. The clover bent under a sudden gust of wind. Blood. From below the edge of the cliff was a huge gold dragon. The rider on its back. There's another one? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that, that, that still gets me. Oh, yeah. Awesome scene. Awesome scene. I recently, well, when I say recently, it was a couple of months ago, listened to an episode of Flights Through Allegasia, the podcast, where mm -hmm. they read this chapter and their reaction was priceless. Uh, yeah, that was, that was fun to write. It's funny. Um, I'm going to give you a small spoiler for the, my next book. Um, oh, listen in everyone. Very, no, no, it's, it's not a big spoiler. It's oh, just well, a small you know, one, anything. Is, my, my mother, uh, who's, it was often my first reader, um, has been joking that my next book really ought to be titled Thud. <laughs> um, and that will only make sense once you actually read the book, but, um. Mm. So that can be the alternate fan title for the book is Thud. I'm sure we'll all keep that in mind when we're reading it. <laughs> yeah, Thud. I nearly named it that, by the way, but I'm, I think I have a better title. Is this uh, FN or is this another book? FN. Okay. Exciting. Yeah, and and so I don't think we're revealing the cover on uh, Monday. I think that's going to be it's going to be a little bit after Monday because we're still finalizing the cover. Um, so the cover is going to be very soon, though. That's awesome. I'm I'm quite excited. I'm very me, very very hyped. Me too. Me too. I've been working on this project for a long time, so it's nice to be finally be able to talk about it. And and. I feel like I've ignored the obvious thing here, which is, you know, congratulations on 10 years of the Aragon Allegasia Minecraft. Server. Oh, yeah, that thing. What an awesome accomplishment. <laughs> and it's amazing to be here. What Thank is you. thud in the ancient language? Um, wow, what is thud in the ancient language? Give me a second here. Um, might I don't think I have thud exactly, but I might have... Let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. I think his thud is already Anglo Saxon. Well, it comes from a. Uh, I don't exactly have thud in the ancient language, but. It's probably a... be something like Dainya dain or something like that, but. I tried to fall into the water and got caught by cobwebs. <laughs> yeah, same. It's just too tempting to just jump down there. All right, shall we proceed? I think we shall. What's up next? Is it um, Bellator? Yeah. So for Bellatona, we have the courtyard right outside the keep. That is perfect. I Absolutely thought it might perfect. be. Where are we? Hey. Now this 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 could not be any more perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's not exactly what I had in mind when I wrote the book, but it's very close, so Alright, let me Now this this um 
this reading is actually one of the ones I did on tour for inheritance. So let's see, where is everyone going to stand? Everyone can stand. All right, I'll stand down in the courtyard so you everyone can see me. No, no, I'm going to stand up here on the top of the stairs. There. There we go. Okay. Everyone ready? I assume everyone's ready. Shall I begin? All right, I will begin. So this is this is from chapter one, I think, in Inheritance, Into the Breach. This is when they are, of course, attacking Bellatona, and uh, things are not going particularly well. The the Douf Dart has just been used, and uh, here we go. Squeal interrupted him. Sound was stabbing, slicing, shivering, like metal scraping against stone. Aragon's teeth vibrated in sympathy, and he covered his ears with his hands, grimacing as he twisted around, trying to locate the source of the noise. Sephira tossed her head, and even through the din, he heard her whine in distress. Aragon swept his gaze over the courtyard two separate times before he noticed a faint puff of dust rising up the wall of the keep from a foot-wide crack that had appeared beneath the blackened, partially destroyed window where Blodgarm had killed the magician. As the squeal increased in intensity, Aragon risked lifting one of his hands off his ears to point at the crack. Look! shouted to Arya, who nodded in acknowledgement. He replaced his hand over his ear. Without warning or preamble, sound stopped. Aragon waited for a moment, slowly lowered his hands, for once wishing that his hearing were not quite so sensitive. Just as he did, the crack jerked open wider, spreading until it was several feet across, and raced down the wall of the keep. Like a bolt of lightning, the crack struck and shattered the keystone above the doors to the building, showering the floor below with pebbles. The whole castle groaned, and from the damaged window to the broken keystone, the front of the keep began to lean outward. Run! Aragon shouted at the Varden. The men were already scattering to either side of the courtyard, desperate to get out from under the precarious wall. Aragon took a single step forward, every muscle in his body tense as he searched for a glimpse of Rorin somewhere in the throng of warriors. At last, Aragon spotted him, trapped behind the last group of men by the doorway, following madly at them, his words lost in the commotion. Then the wall shifted and dropped several inches, leaning even further away from the rest of the building, pelting Rorin with rocks, knocking him off balance, and forcing him to stumble backward under the overhang of the doorway. So Rorin straightened from a crouch, his eyes met Aragon's, and in his gaze, Aragon saw a flash of fear and helplessness, quickly followed by resignation, as if Roran knew that no matter how fast he ran, he could not possibly reach safety in time. A wry smile touched Roran's lips, and the wall fell. Does he live? Does he die? Read chapter two. Mm. <laughs> Can you let us know, please? The suspense is killing me. Uh, <laughs> the fun thing was I was reading that to a lot of people who hadn't actually read the book yet, so they really didn't know if I'd killed Roran or not. Ooh. That's a... That's Tough a one. One hell of a... Slightly sadistic. Slightly yeah. sadistic. That's, that's always the best way to do a reading, is this. Leave him wanting more and leave him wondering if your main character is alive. Mm. Secondary <laughs> character. Uh, well, you know, let's the chapter one, let the let, let's let the let says chapter one kills amazing character, that'd be a heck of a cold oak thing. Well, I kind of did that almost with the beginning of Eldest, right? Yeah, with uh, Azuhad. As, and and, and Murtag as well, and but Murtag, we didn't know at the that's time. Right. Right. Um, it's not chapter one, but I kind of start to sleep in a sea of stars the same way with killing a major character. So, uh, all right, are we gonna do? I think the only one uh, we have Fall left Carvac? is yes. 
Which I don't actually know which um, passage you've picked out for that one. I know it's it's exciting. It's a, it's a mystery, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. All right, I'm bringing everyone over. So we are on um, a little rise above the village. So if you want to make your way down, you can, or you can just look over. So this is actually the village that um, Aragorn and Sephira flew over on their way to Vroengard, we think. Ah, And yes. um, uh, last time you were here, you gave us a couple of names. Um, one, one of them was Thalkarvok, and that's the one that we went with. This is this is absolutely perfect for my reading. Um, if, if everyone wants to look over the village and this little valley with the river, this is this this literally could not be better. So I am going to read from the beginning of chapter chapter eight of the Fork, the Witch, and the Worm. This is the Worm of Calcaris, the beginning of that, and. Let me just check to where I am reading to. Yeah. So I'm going to read about a page and a half. This might be the slightly longer reading. I'm dispensing swords. I'm done dispensing swords. All right, here we go. Chapter 8, The Worm of Kalkaris. The day the dragon arrived was a day of death. He came from the north, shadow upon the wind. Soft and silent, he swept across the valley, blotting out the sun with his velvet wings. Where he landed, field and forest went up in flame. Rifts of ash choked the streams, beasts fled, and horned also. The sounds of grief and terror rent the summer air. Dragon is na named Vermund the Grim, and he was an old and cruel dragon, canny in the ways of the world. Word of him had come from the north, and never had there been a hint or warning that he had forsaken his lair in those frozen, far-off reaches. And yet... There he was, black as charred bone, with a polished gleam to his fitted scales, and a throat packed full of fire. The youngling, Ilgra, watched with her friends from beside the spring-fed pool where they so often swam, high in the foothills along the eastern side of the valley. From that vantage, she saw the dragon ravage their farms with fire and claw, and the sweep of his jagged tail. When the warriors of Clan Skagaro attacked, attacked with bow and spear and axe, Ermund's flame consumed them, or else he trod upon them, and thus made an end to their ambitions. Even the sharpest blade could not pierce his hide, and the Skagaro had no spellcasters to aid them in battle. As such, they found themselves at the mercy of the dragon, able only to annoy or inconvenience him, not to stop him. Never that. Like the evil worm he was, Vermund ate every person who came within his reach, male and female, elder and youngling alike. None were spared. Their livestock too he ate, corralled them with fences of fire, and feasted upon the helpless animals until his chops were clotted with gore and the ground a crimson shambles. All that and more Ilgra saw. She could do nothing to help, so she stayed by the pool, though to wait hurt as much as any wound. Those of her friends who weren't so wise ran to join the fray, and of their number, number many were lost. As the dragon approached the hall of her family, Ilgra bared her teeth in a helpless snarl. Closer it came, and then closer still, and then with a slow moving swipe, the scaled monster crushed her hull. A howl tore from Ilgra's throat, and she sank to her knees and grasped the tips of her horns. And there we go. There we go. I think you made a good choice on that one. 
Um, <laughs> when I was reading, I picked it out as a possibility, but I thought it might have been a bit too long. So I thought I'd let you decide on that. But I'm glad that we got to hear it from you. Thank you. Well, hopefully it didn't bore anyone there, but um, that really needs someone like Christopher Lee to read it properly and you know, someone with the, the voice to really do that justice. Hmm. You're halfway there with the name. Halfway there with the name. I, I was just going to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Christopher, Christopher Lee would have been like a perfect um, perfect voice for Glader or Shrukin. Oh, wow. I mean, Shrukin doesn't say much, so maybe, maybe definitely Glader. No, definitely Glader. I can really so, see that. I like that. This was an absolute pleasure. Getting to read uh, these sections in relevant locations was an absolute blast. I hope everyone enjoyed this. We certainly did, and thank you very much for coming. Your uh, attendance here always makes our events so much more special. <laughs> True. Well, my pleasure. Uh, someone asks, if, is Gerard Doyle going to be doing another book? Um, reading for me i certainly hope so uh, i have no news on that at the moment but i certainly hope that uh we get we get some more performances out of gerard so he's he's been i mean he's been reading these books for 20 years so uh, it would be a shame to not continue that uh, and i believe that there's a good chance that jennifer hale may read the next fractal verse novel also so that's cool oh good that's good news yeah yeah, she, she did an she's amazing just, job with the sleep. Did an amazing job, and everyone out at the publisher enjoyed working with her. She's a consummate professional, so I think there's a good chance she might read the next one. I think it'll de just depend on her schedule because she is a busy lady. <laughs> oh. Well, this was a blast. I would love to keep reading sections for everyone, but I actually have a pile of editing that I have to get through uh, in a relatively short period of time. Of course. So I am I am going to uh, make my farewells, mm. and hopefully uh, we will be back to do this before too long, and we'll have lots of news, uh, well, starting on Monday, and then uh, not too long after that, we will have another countdown. Fantastic. Yeah, of course, we can't keep you here forever, because then we never get any more books. So I know, as much as I know, but if... It, if the server were a real place, I'd just go set up in a in a cottage somewhere and just uh, write books here. Well, I mean, <laughs> surely it wouldn't take much longer to write all your books in Minecraft books, would it? No, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, how many words can you put into one of those books? I think I, it's I 50 forget. pages. You'd have to, um, you know, work yeah, on shortening pages. your stories. They're small pages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you, you could do it like Skyrim, where you break it up into multiple volumes, you know? Yes. Um, uh, Skyrim wouldn't books. wouldn't that be funny if I logged on and started leaving hidden books <laughs> uh, excerpts throughout the server and people have to find them I, I wouldn't say no <laughs> to that you're whitelisted so you're always welcome to come on and leave us an easter egg <laughs> 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 uh, that that's that's mm, that is tempting the problem with also with so many of these ideas though is just time yeah uh, it's like uh, do I want to be a full time YouTube mind tuber, Minecraft YouTuber? Why yes, I wouldn't mind doing that, but I would never write another book. No, exactly. So, what what yeah. is your true passion, you know? Exactly. And also what what, you know, puts food on the table. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to be able to combine those two things. Mm, it's a rare thing. It is. It is. I'm very fortunate and I'm I'm only able to do this because of you and lots of other readers all around the world. So as always, a big thank you from me to you. Uh, all right. I am going to log off. Um, I will uh, do this again at some point. This was a blast. Thank you, everyone, yeah. for attending. I hope you enjoyed the readings and I'm going to go wrestle with some adverbs now. Fantastic. <laughs> Can't wait to read what you're working on. And thanks again for awesome. coming, Christopher. My pleasure. Atrasterni Onotheldoen. Go forth, be awesome, we'll talk soon. See you later. Bye. See you later. Bye. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, oh, yeah. Always amazing to have Christopher here. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, I can't really follow that act. So I suppose <laughs> as people filter out slowly, um, I will... Ah. I had something else to ask him, but I'll do that later. No worries. 
Thanks for coming, everyone. 43, 42, 41, 40. They're Yeah. Sad. But uh, everyone, old. feel free to stick around in the Arcana Discord server. We have lots more uh, Minecraft events, Inheritance Cycle events. Have a go with our bot, Gildirian. Just at mention him and ask him an Inheritance Cycle question. And he'll do his best to answer for you. He's based on uh, GPT-3 from OpenAI and trained on 500 Inheritance Cycle questions and answers. So give it a try. Uh, we also have a quote game in the Quotes channel where you can guess which character said a quote and which book it was in and you can earn some XP um, which is basically just internet points it means nothing but it's cool we like it um, what <laughs> else do we have here uh, we have uh, a couple more events coming on this weekend uh, coming up next we have uh, for you Minecrafters we have a building workshop a terraforming workshop and an interior design workshop if you attend those you uh, might learn something about how we build an Antelligator and it will even help you apply to become a member of staff. And what that'll allow you to do is come on and join and explore and help build whenever you want. And that'd be great for us because that means we get Antelligator finished earlier and Arcana, the MMORPG, will get that released sooner. And then everyone can play and have fun. Just a lot of work. It is a lot of the work. More, yeah. more hands to work it. Yes, many hands make light work, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think I'll close the stage now if there's nothing else left to say. Unless anyone wants to jump in. If you raise your hand. I don't know why I'm keeping it going at this stage, but <laughs> yeah, something, maybe. And then the interesting part is over. Yeah, exactly. No, it doesn't look like anyone's coming in. All right, I think I'll end it. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Yeah. See you later. And thanks, Mario, as well, for joining us. Of course, of course. <laughs> Anytime. No worries. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.